Hi, so I'm starting to make the puppets for my imaginary friends and I'm starting with the main character, Sam, who's a six-year-old boy. So I'm carving him and turning him into a little rod puppet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am working with this material. It's a little bit like styrofoam, except it's much, much denser. I have a drawing of, of Sam and I've cut a template out of his head. And so the head needs to be cut out of this material. I'm going to use a saw to begin with and cut it out. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw it on and take it from there. So he's cut out. Um, I've sawed all, sawn all the edges off and what I'm doing now is using a surf on and I'm just rounding him off until I get a really smooth shape, a bit like a pebble. I don't want to have any edges or anything sharp on him um, and that'll make it much easier for when I, when I cover him at the end. Um, once I've got, got him as smooth as I possibly can with the rasps and everything, then I will finish him off just with a little bit of sandpaper and then I can start building the features. So I'm at the stage where I can just sand them off now and make it as smooth as I can and get every little ridge off. I'm using quite smooth um, a fine grain sandpaper. If it's very rough then obviously start with a heavier one and then move now you can use, you can do exactly the same thing with polystyrene if you've got some packing material. Um, but you have to be a little bit more careful with it because the fibres are not quite as da uh, dense. So you'd be a little bit more careful but you can do the same thing. So if you've got any packing material around boxes and things that's turned up then hang on to it and make a puppet. Pretty smooth, it's not too bad that. I'm just going to re uh, redraw my features back on the game now so I get an idea where they are. So um, just to make sure so we get a balance to get the eyes on first. Sam is starting to come to life. Very simple, very simplistic. I want them quite cartoony, so it basically he's going to have some big, wide, overly eyes, a little tiny snub nose, which I'll make out of a separate piece and add on to it. And then a little smile because it's a happy little thing. So I'm just making Sam a little nose now. Um, just cut little piece of this and I'm shaping it before it sticks it. And because I've carved it well, the way I've carved it, because I wanted a nice smooth um, finish, I have to add the nose. But I mean, I could have carved and carved the shape into it, but it's a bit too big of a nose. In case they start starting to um, get the shape of it, I want to have a little curve in it. So I will use a nice curvy rasp and curve it around a little bit. This a little sticky up nose at the end. Sam gets into the desert and the shape that I want. And I'm just using this line. Line his nose up. And I don't want to make it too long because I don't want it to push through the nose, so I push it in a little bit deeper. I'm going to glue this in place in a little bit. And so it means I can just check where his nose is and make sure it's in the right place. And once I've got that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some glue. Now, the glue I'm going to use is just uh, wood glue, PVA white glue. It gives a really good bond um, once it's dry. It takes a little longer, obviously, to dry, but once it's dry, it's a really good, strong glue to use. And when I cover the head afterwards, I'm going to be doing it with um, brown paper and glue. So. on, line it 
up again the same hole where you had before. And because I've put a little curve in the back of the nose as well, it means it's going to sit nice and flat and fold the continent of this bit. So that's that part. I just need to let that dry. Now, um, when you've um, sanded some of the material out that you had earlier, keep a hold of that because it's really handy to mix with a bit of glue if you need to fill any gaps or any holes. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gouge out his eyes. Um, I've got some little handheld chisels here, some small chisels. And what I'm going to do is I have drawn on the shape of my eye and I'd like to have a really nice smooth eye socket inside. So I'm just going to carve that out now. Just like so, carve it out. And then once I've got the shape of it and I'm happy with it, then I'll just sand it down a little bit. And when I cover it, I'm going to cover that eye hole because I'm going to sink the eyes into it afterwards. So to make the body, I've just measured it up um, for the size I need and I've cut another section out of here. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm just going to round this off, sand it. I'm going to leave a bit of width at the top for the shoulders and some width at the bottom for the hips because when I attach the legs afterwards, I need to cut a section to fit the legs into. Um, and then I'll shape it a little bit round for the waist. So, back okay, these so I'm again. happy with the, the body size now, which um, is right there. So what I'm going to do now is um, prepare the body to put the legs on. So for the legs, I'm going to use wooden dowel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've marked out the middle of this. And I'm going to measure how the dowel fits just so I need enough room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut sections um, to put the legs into. If I just show you there, closer up. So the leg is going to be sitting inside the body here. And I'm going to curve this um, dowel as well because it needs enough. It needs to be smooth so it can swing and there needs to be enough depth that I can put a, a piece of wire, a bar through here so I can um, actually attach it as well. So next thing, cut into here. So back to my saw, into my vise. Okay, so the dowel is cut. Um, I've cut a section for the top part of the leg and the bottom part and you can see then when when it goes into the body I've curved it as well so I've, at the top I've um, sanded it and filed it so you can see then how that's going to go together once I put in a joint at the top and a knee joint but I've got it all laid out and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some feet so before I start assembling, I'll just make sure everything's the right height and once I make the feet, I'll be able to tell that better. So feet time. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did with the hands. I'm going to cut it out of this material. Um, you want a little bit of weight in the feet. So even if you're using maybe um, something lighter for the body or, or for the legs or anything else, you, you always want to have something that's a bit heavier for the feet, um, just so the puppet's a bit more grounded. So this is actually a little bit heavier than the one I was using before too, so a bit more weight in it. I'm going to draw the feet out on here and cut them out and do the same sand it. Same so thing. I've put the legs together with the leather and I've also wrapped a little cuff around the top and the bottom and that just keeps it in place. And you can see where the wire goes through the body now that the legs are now in place. So the next thing to do is the feet. Um, so I've drilled a hole through the bottom of each ankle because I, I would like a little bit of movement in there too so um, I'm just going to put the foot into there into the, and then feed the wire through it. Okay, so that's the hands done so we've got the left hand and the right hand and a bit of matching <laughs> and the head is almost dry so you can see the size of the hands right up against the head and they're very stylistic as I say I've gone for quite a cartoony type um, style using simple bold shapes which works really well for so puppets. That's the legs on now and the feet 
Um, I've just got that, I need to cut all the wire down and fix it in, but you can see it's actually got quite a nice movement now. There's lots of, um, lots of flexibility with him. So, ready for the next bit, which is basically to put the arms and the head on. So the arms I'm just going to make out of rope. Um, nice and simple, lots of flexibility, and then I'm going to make a rope attachment for the head too. And I'll put a little rod on the back of the head so you can work. But, um, there you go. 